Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose same remains the same to bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. So yeah, I'm going I'm going to be elaborating on this topic or expounding on this topic due to the knowledge granted and the instruction of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be going or we're going to be looking at divination and magic. Yes, divination and magic. Now, I may not be going deep enough uh, as some people would want to, the nuts and bolts and the tales on the dark side sort of deal. But I will do or I will go as allowed by the Holy Spirit. This is necessary for us to have an understanding because of what is happening in this world today. Not that it is strange. Because these things have been ongoing for a long time. As far back. As far back as you can go back, even before we were born, thousands and thousands of years ago. But the strange thing is that today we see men and women in churches and various places participating in this act of divination and magic. And uh, people are fascinated, giving, because these people can give answers to circumstances that are usually personal. They can call you out or they can say some stuff that is very detailed. And many times people are astonished. These people go around on parade and call themselves prophets and say that they are giving prophecy. But is this really prophecy? I would say, to a large extent, I would, I'd go as far as to say, I'd put a number on it. 99.5% times, it is a lie. It is no prophecy. It is divination and magic. And so what's often produced today as prophecy or acts from God is nothing but divination and magic. Nothing. And so you're saying divination and magic, Pastor? Are you sure? We read about these things, we heard about this, but, but are, are these things real? I say, yes, they are real. I say, yes, they are real. Now, before we get into the study, deep into the study, I want to, I want to, to, to give you the definition of these terminologies. When we speak about divination, divination, it is the practice essentially of determining hidden significance or a cause of events. I say again, it's a practice of determining hidden significance or a cause of events. For example, foretelling the future. Foretelling the future. Many people like when people foretell their future. And so they will go to great lengths to hear about what is going to happen. And I say, it's nothing but divination. People who practice divinations, they are called diviners. Your various aspect of divination. I'm not going to every aspect because it all falls under the umbrella. Then now you have magic. I'm not talking about people using some card and moving it around fast and say, look at this and look at that and look at that. I'm talking about magic. Magic is the power of influencing the cause of events by charms or spell. Once again, it's the power of influencing the cause of events 
by charms or spells. People who practice magic are called magicians. You have various names for diviners and magicians these days. Sorcerers, voodoo priests, um, the whole man, the wise man, the hobby man, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, whatever you want to call them. But if they participate in an act that determine hidden significance of cause or events and tell you that they're going to tell you the future, it's divination. If they conjure up some power by cause, by, 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 by events or um, I'm influencing the, the outcome by charms or spells. They're magicians. And I'm not talking about the, 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 the magicians that you, you see some people moving cards around and say they're magicians. Now, divination and magic. What, what, what really, what, what's, what's this? What's divination and magic? These are the attempt. To, 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 to contact supernatural powers to determine answers to questions that are usually not privy to human beings. That's what they are. These are the attempt, I say once again, to, to, to contact supernatural powers to give answers or to influence outcomes which usually are not privy to human beings. Now, divination, divination and magic. Are they real? Does the scripture talk about that? Yes, the scripture talk a lot about divination and magic. If you go all the way back in the book of Exodus, this was very profound. Exodus chapter 7. Just going to show you a little, a little, a little of, 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 of divination in action and magician in action. God sent. Moses and Aaron in the presence of Pharaoh. And God told them that they're going to ask you to, to show us a miracle. And when they ask you to do such thing, what are you going to do? Tell Aaron to cast his rod down and then his rod will become a serpent. God instruct them to do that. A miracle. Okay. So here we see now. In verse 10, so Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and did just as the Lord command. And Aaron cast his rod down before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a servant. It became a serpent. Guess what? Pharaoh wasn't impressed. Pharaoh wasn't impressed. Verse 11, it clearly shows you what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh also called wise men. And sorcerers, listen, the term that they are, I told you that they are, they are known by various names. Wise men and sorcerers, listen to, listen to this now. So the magicians of Egypt, he called wise men and sorcerers to do what? To work their magic. He says, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. With their enchantments. Now the NIV said that by their secret arts. No, this has nothing to do with God. Pharaoh called upon the magicians and the sorcerers or the wise men of Egypt. Say, hey, come here. These two guys are here. They claim that they're from the almighty God. Look what they did. They cast their rods down, and, it, and, and they cast it, he cast his rod down, and it turned into a serpent. But what happened? Pharaoh called his men, his servants, and said, hey, come here. Come and show them what you can do. And they did likewise. How did they do it? Not from God, not because they were empowered by God, but it says, the New King James Version says, from with, it's a, with their enchantments. The New International Version, I like the way it, 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 it clarifies. It says, by their secret hearts. You see, divination and magic 
is a secret heart. You have diviners and you have magicians who people go to, who people consult to work on their behalf. People say, hey, I want this done. What can you do for me? I want to know what's going to happen in my future. Give me a word. Look in your crystal ball. Let me see what's going there, going on. Move your tarot card. Move it around. Tell me the future. Throw the bones down. Let me see what's going on. That's what people do. People in high places do those things. You see what Pharaoh did? Pharaoh called for them to say, come and do this. And they did that. So that was a very profound. Even if you read through the entire scripture, portion of scripture, you see, although the diviners and the magicians, they fake a miracle, but what happened? The men who were ordained by God, because they were under the authority of God, they overcame. What happened? Aaron's rod ate them up. But that did not stop Pharaoh. You see, sometimes people in high places, in high places, because they feel like they are so powerful. Even poor people do it too. Not just people in high places. But I'm sorry, I'm, I'm working my way down in terms of, 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 of divination and magicians. We, we describe or we, we define divination. Divination, an act of foretelling the future. Just to sum it up, magician is an act to influence the outcome or to change event by, by, by charms or spells. That's what they are. You can call it sorcery, you can call it witchcraft, you can call it voodoo, you can call it obia. In, 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 over here in, in, the, in the Western world, you have all different branches, various, various branches. And yes, it is a religion. Religion does not mean it has nothing to do with God. It only means that they are consulting a supernatural power. Because they are, they are not consulting God. It's a supernatural power. That's the reason I like to say God is outside of religion. God did not create us so we can be classified or we can be placed into different religions. God created us to worship him in his image and his likeness. And I like to say his image and his likeness is not by how we look because no one can see God. No one knows what God looks like. So the image and the likeness must be defined by his characteristics. And I like these two, which are holiness and righteousness. Holiness and righteousness. Yeah, we'll go into a different argument when man say, uh, oh yeah, but, 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 but Jacob fight with God and, 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 and that. And uh, yeah, well, okay, we'll go into that another time. So, back to divination and magician. I'm telling you this. Even people, even people who should be working on behalf of God, people who, are, who should be working on behalf of God, Sometimes do not seek God's advice. They turn to divination and magic. It happened in the past and it's happening today. A very profound example in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, was the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. He was chosen by God. He was God's servant to exact judgment. To exact judgment. And look what he did. Oh, wait a minute. You're saying he was chosen by God? Yes, he was chosen by God. First, let me, let, me, let me find a portion of scripture to show you where he was chosen by God. And I'm going to show you how, 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 God termed, how, how he was termed by God. So he was chosen by God to exact judgment, but he never consulted God. So first, let's, 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 let's create the, the thing. Look right here. Jeremiah 27, verse 6. And now, this is God through the prophet Jeremiah. And now I have given all these land into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant. You hear what God says? My servant. Why? Because God is the only one that elect leaders. So though he was chosen by God to exact judgment... And a rebellious set of people, 
Look what they did in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 21. For the king of Babylon stand at the parting of the road at the fork of the two roads to use divination. What did he do? He shakes the arrow. He consults the images. He looks at the liver. He looks at the liver. Act of divination. He did not open his Bible and read. He did not go on his knees and read. He looked at the signs. He shook the arrow. And he looks at the liver. Some people consult. Even the dead in divination. People offer up sacrifices. People go outside and they look at the sun and say, okay, that is going to happen. They don't rely on God. I'm showing you how subtle this thing is. This is how subtle it is. Shake it up. Cast it on the ground. If that goes over there, we're going to do that. If that goes there, we're going to do that. That's divination. That's how subtle it is. So divination does not mean you have to be locked up in some dark room you have to be rubbing a crystal ball you have to be sprinkling blood yes those are acts of divination too but I'm just showing you it can be so subtle you're saying if this happened I'm going to go that way if that happened I'm going to go that way that's divination Nebuchadnezzar what did he do he shakes the arrow he consults the images he looks at the liver in his right hand is the divination for Jerusalem to set up the battle ram, to call for a slaughter, to lift the voice with shouting to say. So he, 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 God, God chose him, my servant, to exact judgment. He still went ahead. Though he got the authority and he consults and he used divination. Many of us today. We have the authority from God to act, to do certain things, to move. But we are not moving, we are not doing anything until we consult our wise men. Until we consult our sorcerer. Until we consult our own sign in our house. Before you go to work, you flip. I, I, I'm going to show you how, how, how crazy this divination thing is. Divination is so crazy. You have two things and you shake it up in your hand and say, okay, you have two pairs, you a die in your hand, shake it up. Okay. Oh, I'm going to go that way because that say that today. I'm going to go this because this is It is subtle but accepted in today's society, so you should be educated. Some people go real deep in divination. Some people who profess to know God. Profess to know God, but they do things totally opposite. They practice a sort of divination that is known as necromancy. Necromancy, meaning consulting the dead. And that's not something that is new today. That's something that has been going on all the way back. Consult the dead. People who profess to know God today. Remember the definition of, of divination, sum it up. Foretelling the future. Magic. You want to influence outcome. You want to change events by charms or spell. So here we are. Here we are now. We want to go deeper. So what? Consulting the dead. People who are supposed to know God do these things. Consult the dead on Saturday. They are in church on Sunday. Consult the dead because they want a promotion. Consult the dead because they want to be the pastor. Consult the magician because they want to change the outcome. They want, to, they want the pastor who is in the church to run away. So they can come into the pulpit. Consult the, consult the wise man or the sorcerer. Because they, they want to know what's coming on, what's going to happen tomorrow. But I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, do not be afraid. We will go into it. I don't care about the bones that they're shaking, the blood that they're spilling, and whatever they're going to do. I shall not be moved. So let's go into, don't want to get carried away here. 
Let's go into that. They consult the dead. Even people who claim to know God consult the dead because they want a sign. They want an answer. When they should consult God. Because if you were chosen by God, put in place by God, given an office by God, why are you consulting any other than God? And I'm saying it's not just today. This has been going on forever and ever. And so don't be fooled sitting in church talking about there's no such thing. You'd be an idiot. Without apology. So all the way back, 1 Samuel chapter 28, the first king, Saul, look at this, 28 verse 7. Then Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who is a medium, meaning she, she be channeled between two worlds. That I may go to her and inquire of her. He was put in place by God. He could not wait on the man of God. At the same time, he was, he, 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 he was rebellious. And I'll show you why rebellion is worse than witchcraft. So he was rebellious. He was chasing after someone that God, 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 God had installed, which was David. So now, 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 because, because he's like, okay, you know what? Go and find me this woman. Because the man that I used to speak to is no more. He's dead. Samuel was dead. So he said, go and find me so I may inquire of her. This was a man who was supposed to know God. This was a man who was chosen to lead God's people. And his servant said to him, in fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. Some of us who are in high places, we don't want to be seen. So we send someone on our behalf to go and consult, to go and act on our behalf. That's exactly what Saul did. And so this is what Saul, Saul do to verse 28. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes. Many of you are hiding and doing your divination. So he, he, he put on other clothes and he go. And this is what he said to her. Verse 8. Please conduct a science for me. Yeah, um, he's not talking about getting some test tubes and... And working out the experiment to see because he has a theory and he wanted to. He's not trying to reproduce anything. He said, bring up for me the one I shall name to you. Remember, she's a medium. So she's going to be the one that communicate. Then the woman said to him, look, you know what Saul has done. He was Saul, but he was hiding. Pretending he was not. To go and consult someone that he has no business to consult. Because he was the same one that outlawed this practice because he was chosen by God. He, she said that he has cut off mediums and spirits from the land. You see that? So the, 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 the diviner, the magician, the medium, she's saying, Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? She was afraid. But Saul persisted. And said, do this. So the woman, the woman in verse 13 said, and the king said to her, she discovered that it was Saul. And, and then what she said, and the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the hurt. And so he said to her, what is the form? And she described it. And it was Samuel. And there was Saul. Having a conversation with Samuel, read it all for yourself, go down. And he had a conversation with Samuel. So you see, this act of divination, this practice involves all sorts of people from all levels of society. Many people today are really practicing necromancy because they go to the diviners to consult the dead Many people go to these men or these women to tell them the future, to div that's divination, to change an event. That man is going to get the job. I don't want him to get it. I'm going to cast a spell for me so that he'll die. Cast a spell for me so that, so that he'll go dumb, he'll go mute. Cast a spell that he'll be late for work. 
cast a spell so that they don't get the place so I can get it. Cast a spell so my children will, will go for That's magic. We're not talking about hiding something in this hand. And says, show me which one it is. They say, aha, uh -huh, it's not here, but really and truly, it's in this hand. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about going and getting or, or seeking supernatural. The supernatural to work on your behalf. Some people, some people even add a little to it in the act of divination and magic. They use animal sacrifice and even human sacrifice. Yes, and I'm saying to you, these things are not new today. These things have been ongoing. As a matter of fact, if you turn your Bibles in Kings, Second Kings, let's look at it. I can't believe these things are in the scripture. And yet still you have people who, who claim to know God, they practice these things. Second Kings chapter 17 and verse 17, listen. And they cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fires, practice witchcraft and soothsaying, divination, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord. People do these things today. And we'll go into why people practice divination and why people practice magic. So clearly, we see that even the Old Testament told you. The Old Testament speak to us. The Old Testament have documented proof of people practicing divination. People who claim to know God practice divination. People who do not know God practice divination. And magic, it's there, it's written. And whatever was written aforetime was written for us to learn. So from this here book, the Holy Scriptures, you should learn. Now we also saw the old, we also saw the New Testament talking about divination and magic. The New Testament speak about divination and magic. Yes, 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 yes. It was there. The New Testament even 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 produced acts of self exorcism because the Apostle Paul had to get rid of an a, a, a evil spirit from out of a, a, a slave girl. And in Acts 16. Verse 16, it says, Now it happened as we went to pray that a certain slave girl possessed by a spirit of divination. She met us. And born, uh, she, she met us. So this girl had the spirit of divination. But guess what? People profited from her. She's a slave girl. She has this gift of divination. She was possessed, I should say. Not a gift. Possessed. It's not a gift. It's a possession by an evil spirit. Divination is a possession. It's not a gift. You're not gifted with nothing evil. It's a possession. So she was possessed by the spirit of divination. She can tell the future. She could tell the future. And she was walking and she was crying and said, Oh, these men are the servants of the Most High. And what Paul did? Paul got annoyed and said to the spirit, Paul, notice Paul did not say it to the girl. He spoke to the spirit within the girl. I command you in the name of Christ, Jesus Christ, to come out of her. So there he cast it out. Really, this was exorcism, exercise. He, he, he cast it out. So you do not, you do not abuse the person that is occupied by this evil or that is possessed. You curse or you cast the spirit from the person. That's what Paul did. Now, some people may say today, divination is nothing, it's harmless. It's just a little palm reading. So they build this, it, it is so subtle. You go in some stores, you see this little box with this little guy in it with his head in a turban. They're asking you to drop coins in it and it will tell you your future. And it's so subtle. It's like a little game and it draws, and you know, I've never done it. I'm telling what I see people do, because this always turned me off. Right? Even before, even before I was, I was in Christendom. I'm saying before I was, because I had a form of godliness then. Right? So, you go in, people drop it, and it makes some funny sound, some nice music, and it tells you some stuff. It's divination, but it's been colored up and presented to us. So we can accept it. People even allow their children to participate because they say, oh, it is harmless. You're driving down the street, palm reader. 
You see them on talk shows these days. Talk show these days. Telling people the future. This is what's going to happen. You see people, people practice necromancy right there on TV. Oh, your granddad died 15 years ago. You want to talk to him? It's, see, it's on television. Right. It's not hidden. And people cheer and clap. And many, when, and many in the crowd are supposed to be Christians, Bible-believing Christians. That's what they do. So people say this thing is harmless. It's not harmless. It's just reading palm. You're just going to know your future. God holds the future. And, and, and some would say, oh, it's nothing. It's just a, it's just a lotto. It's just a game of chance. You see, all these things. Oh, it's just astrology. It's just your horoscope. All those things are, are, are divination. Oh, it's just tarot card reading. Oh, it's just a little witchcraft. Oh, it's my religion. Oh, it's just a little spell. Oh, it's nothing. It's a little toy. It's a little Ouija board. Oh, look how cute it is. Ooh, wee. It's not. And they normalize these things. It's divination and magic. Scripture warns us against that. But society, however, makes this wickedness acceptable by portraying these things in movies and normalizing them. But I say to you, be warned. Be warned. Keep your children away. Do not buy them those books, casting any spells. Do not support them. Normalizing that, creating Halloween and all those stuff, dressing up as magicians, running around with your little wand in your hand, abracadabra, poof, all those craziness. Don't do those things. That is a subtle way of bringing evil. You're opening a door that should not be open. It should not be open. Do not, do, do, do not go there. Do not try to tempt God. Conjuring up some evil. Watching some movie. Woo -hoo. No, no, no. No, you know better. No, you know better. Don't support them. Normalizing it. Then your child grow up saying that he wants to be a witch. Or a warlock. Or he's a good witch. There's no such thing as a good witch. Oh, that's a good witch and that's an evil witch. No, they're all evil. They're all evil. No. Stay away from those things, brothers and sisters. Why do people practice divination? Why do people participate in magic, though they know that these things are sinful? They know that these things are punishable by eternal damnation or hell. You're saying they are? Yes, they are punishable by eternal damnation or hell. They are punishable by eternal damnation or hell. Look at the scriptures. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. It says, but the cowardly unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, and idolaters, all liars, shall have their part in the lake of fire. Note that. It's right there. It is there. You say, but I see murderers and all of that in it. I'll go into that another time. I just want you to look to see that this very act that they're normalizing, it is punishable by eternal death. Note, in this passage right here, in this verse right here, these sinful deeds, it's just naming some sinful deeds, but these sinful deeds are all sin. And why is it that divination or sorcery is among it? Because sin essentially is rebellion against God. It go against God. And sin or rebellion is compared to witchcraft. Rebellion is compared to witchcraft. Now look at the scriptures Look at 1 Samuel. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel. It is compared to witchcraft. So when you see the sorcery in, included in there, it's not because it's any word. It is compared. 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 15 verse 20. She says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. 
And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So it is a comparison. Why? Because all these things go against God. All these things go against God. Now, if the Bible teaches against divination and magic, you're saying, why is it that people still practice these things? Why is it that people are so drawn into, into these things, into divination and magic? Why is it? Why? Why? And the answer is in the scriptures too. And you can see for yourself when you read the scripture. I said the first thing, people like to practice divination and magic are control because of power, importance, and because they make a profit. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. Tells you about a man, his name was Simon the sorcerer. It says right here, but there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria. Listen to what he says, claiming that he was someone great to whom they all, they, to all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying that this man is the great power of God. Now let me break it down to you. I tell you that people practice these things because it gave them prestige. It gives them power. It gives them money. It makes them feel like they're someone. Simon the sorcerer, he says that, listen, what, listen, 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 he says. He claimed that he was someone great. Diviners are magicians. They will live in a hut in the middle of a forest. Because people revere them. And people from all walks of life will go to them. Kings will go to them. Presidents, prime ministers. People in the entertainment industry. People in the pulpit. They will all go to these people. And so, it said that he claimed he was someone great. And listen to, listen to this. I'm telling you, the Bible has all the answer. No. Listen to what the people say. First, first, listen. It says, to whom they all gave heed. They listened to him from the greatest, meaning people in high position, to the least, to the poor man on the corner. Are we seeing those things today? And why do they do that? They said, this man is, is the great power of God. But he practiced divination. We are seeing these things today even in church. People will step in the pulpit. They don't preach no sermon. They don't tell you anything about repentance. They don't tell you anything about any Bible. But they will tell you that you are, you are wearing a red sock today. And it has two holes in it. And people say, oh, man of God. And they will go. And they will dig into bags. Or they will tell, open your bag and you will see money. It's magic. The same thing is happening today, brothers and sisters. Diviners and magicians are in church. And people are listening to them and they are calling them man of God. Because they can tell them their shoe size. Tell you that you are there. You are cheating on your husband. You are there. You, you, you drive a red car. You right there. You did this. The game tonight is going to do be this, this, this is this. God telling, telling prophets to tell people about game, tell people about color socks. Open your bag and see money. Bring this empty bag. And they'll bring a empty bag and they'll show the people, see it's empty. Close it and they'll go in and they'll take money and throw it up and people are feeling excited. Check your bank account. Look on your phone. Look, you'll see money and people are excited. People are drawn into this stupidity, not knowing that God has warned us about this. Divination, divination, God has warned us about this. This is not going to be, this, this, this is nothing new. It's in the scriptures that these men will come and they're, and, and they're here today in the churches. We are seeing it. 
First Timothy chapter 4. Now the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, expressly said, the Spirit just said clearly in latter times, now, now, some will depart from the faith. Why? Giving heed to deceiving spirits, deceiving preachers, it is saying in other words, and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy. That's what's happening today. These men, they'll tell you that they're a prophet or they're apostles and they'll get it wrong and nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care. They'll perform fake raising people from the dead. People love this sort of stupidness. Look, he make that person's arm grow back using magic. Look, she got out the wheelchair and walk. Look. She throw the crutches away. Look, they're doing this. People are looking for a sign. And they're getting it through divination and magic. The Spirit expressly said that these things will happen. They will depart from the faith. And that is the reason these diviners and these magicians command such great audience. People love these things. They don't want to. Listen, they don't want the gospel. They like entertainment. People will dress. Note, a lot of people going to church today, they don't carry any Bible. Even though you can have Bible apps, they don't even have the app on their phone. They'll go. And when all these things are happening, you see 15,000 cell phones videoing it. And everybody posting it on social media to get a like. Diviners and magicians. That's what's happening today. I say... Men love to participate in these things because they get power and they feel that they are somebody. That is the reason many of these diviners and magicians, you know, the one who cast the spell, the one who foretell for these men, that is the reason they will live way in the woods in a little shack because they have power over the, the little people who are running in. Have power over Presidents of, uh, 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 presidents of companies have power over a household. Doesn't matter if they live in the woods in the shack. That is the reason, that is the reason that many of them they don't really care about getting rich. Because a rich man is coming to them. And remember, these people are agents of the devil. People who love these things don't care. They'll participate. People love divination and magic because of money and fame. So I'm saying the person, the diviner and the magician, they practice these things because they feel like they're somebody and people revere them calling them man of God, a woman of God. Don't trust them. Turn away from them. Now, look at the scripture. I say people love it because of money and fame. Micaiah. Chapter 3, Micaiah, chapter 3, some of you say Micah, some say Micaiah, chapter 3. It says right here, verse 11, her heads judge for a price, listen to this, her priests teach for pay and her prophets divine for money. Are we seeing these things today? Are we, are we seeing these things today? So people love these things because of money and fame. Now, we've been through that. So you understand that this is not no magic trick. You understand that the spirit world is real. You understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and power. You understand that these are real things we're talking about right here. This is not no fake stuff. So those, those of you who, who say, oh, I'm in church, so there's no such thing as devils. You're lying. The scripture tells you about it. You are lying. You're saying there's no such thing as, 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 as divination divin and magician. The spirit world is real. Take heed. It is important for you to understand this and to know that it is real. Avoid it. Jeremiah 27 verse 8. 
Listen to this, verse 8. And it shall be, and it shall be that the, the nation and the kingdom will not serve the king Nebuchadnezzar. Read it, read it, read it. Read it. Verse 9. Therefore, do not listen to your prophets and your diviners, nor dreamers, nor your soothsayers or sorcerers who speak to you saying you shall not serve. Do not listen to them. What does the prophet go on to say? For they prophesy to you a lie. Everything that comes from the mouth of these people are lies. Lies. He said, but, but, but they tell me things that, is, that came to pass. Because they're in consultation with the spirit world. They do something because they're in consultation with the spirit world. So they are conjuring up and they are leading on a supernatural power. But not God. I say supernatural because it's from the spirit world. You are to avoid this. You are saying, but, but, but they, they use the Bible. They can't be diviners. Whenever I go in there, their, their Bible is always open to a psalm. How can they be conjuring up spirits and they are using the Bible? It's open to a psalm. What does the scripture have to say about that? People masquerade. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Chapter 11. Look at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself, angel of light. So listen to the verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. So you said, but they use Bible. They do all this. They have the name. They call themselves apostles. They call themselves prophets. What did the Bible say? It says, for such are false, false apostles, deceitful workers. trans, And they know Bible too. You know, some of these people know Bible. You may not see them looking at any liver, shaking any arrows, speaking to the dead. But they are diviners by their very nature. Now, as children of the Lord, as children of God, I'm saying this to you. I'm saying this to be one. Divination, magic, ancient spirituality, all those things does not come without a price. Those of you who indulge, you'll have a price to pay. Stop it. Get out of it before it's too late. You will have a price to pay. Isaiah 47 verse 8. Therefore hear this now. You who are given to pleasures. Who dwell securely. Who say in your heart. I am and there is no one else beside. I shall not sit as a widow. Nor shall I know the loss of children. Because you feel smug. But listen to this. But these two things shall come to you in one moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your sorceries. For the great abundance of your enchantments. So you practice these things and things are going well right now. But one of these days there is a price to pay. The prophet says because of multitudes of your saucers and the great abundance of your enchantments, there is going to be a price to pay. There is going to be a price to pay. So be warned as children of the Lord, followers of Jesus Christ, we shall not practice such thing. There is going to be a price to pay. Now you're saying, preacher man, these men are so powerful. I'm saying to you, do not be afraid. You're saying, what do you mean, preacher? I'm saying, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You're saying, is the Bible, is this in the Bible? Yes, it is in the Bible. It is in the Bible. Second, uh, uh, second, second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So don't be afraid of them and them divination. Their hand will be certain. Now you're saying that's all good preacher. Can they cast a spell? Can, 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 it, can it affect me? It can affect you. Depends. It can affect you if you stray from God. It can affect you. If you stray from God. You're saying what? If I stray from God? If you get weak in the faith. 
if you're engulfed by the spirit of fear, because they look at you and say, I'm going to do this to you. Someone said that to me once, and I said, take my shoes, take a strana here, do all of that. And then they back up. Even if they did their magic art, and I say, you see that it worked? No, I will not give them any credit. God took me away and God did what God has to do. God does not give you a spirit of fear. The moment you develop the spirit of fear, you will never go inside your house again. You'll never go inside. You, 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 you fail to lean on the Holy Spirit to grant you, or to, to give you the authority to overcome. So if you stray from God, developing the this, this spirit of consistent fear, doing all these things, then guess what? You will be beaten down. Do not stray from God. Don't stray from God. Stay, 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 stay. What do I mean? Ephesians, look at it. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Nor give place to the devil. If you stray from God, Meaning, giving place to the devil by idle talk, by watching all those movies, by all these things in your mind, by going out there, by playing these games of chances, by doing all these things. People telling you a scary story. You're afraid to walk down the street. Remember, it's a spiritual world. It's not a physical world. The spiritual, the spiritual. Some people say, oh, he was beaten up by the spirit. How can the spirit slap you? <laughs> if, someone is, if someone is possessed, they can get enraged and they can do crazy things. They can hold this microphone and snap it in two because they now have supernatural power. They can slap you, they can push you, they can do all those things. So do not stray from God. It says do not give place for the devil. That's what it says. And I tell you, stop watching those wickedness. Psalm 101 verse 3 says, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the works of those who fall away. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. Some say, how do you avoid this? How do you overcome it? By understanding that God does not give you a spirit of fear. By do not give place to the devil. By don't set any wicked things before your eyes. Don't give in to idle talk. Don't do those things. Don't do it. Because the moment you, the moment you indulge, oh, 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 I hear something from uh, someone, someone was in the spirit and they said that they have a word for you. Don't, don't listen to it. Don't listen to them. Get away from me. It's not coming from God. Right. Oh, what did they say? Don't tell me anything. Get away. Do not indulge them. When you do that, you're giving place to the devil. Oh, but it was so real. Only them alone. Oh, oh, only, only, they, they must know something. Don't listen to them. It's coming from the devil. Proverbs 4, 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart, the scripture says. So how do you escape? How can you not be affected by these things? One, God does not give you a spirit of fear. Two, don't give place to the devil. Three, guess what now? No wicked things before your eyes. And guess what? The last one, four. Keep your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart. Sometimes these attacks are relentless and seems as if they will never end. Because they realize that you are with God. They realize that, they realize that you're walking. You're walking with the Spirit. And because you're walking with the Spirit, they're going to come up against you to heat up your flesh. They're going to be relentless against you. I don't matter how much of a prophet you say you are, apostle you say you are, a preacher you say you are. When the diviners come up against you and throwing darts at you, only God can rescue you. But you got to stay tuned. Yes, and this is in Scripture. Yes, it is. Daniel, the prophet of God. Daniel chapter 10. 21 days. 21 days. Look at verse 12. It said, Then he said to an angel, speaking to Daniel, Do not fear, Daniel. Remember, you, you can't fear. From the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. God will hear your prayer. But listen, 
the diviners at work. Verse 13, it says, But the prince and the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. And behold, and behold, listen, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. God will fight the battle for you. 21 days it took him. So you're saying, your 21 days may be years. Your 21 days may, may be years. Diviners at work attacking you, attacking you, attacking you. The spiritual world is real. But divination and magic cannot physically harm you. The spirit is not going to come and slap you in the face and punch you in the face and kick you in the gut. Striking fear into you. Watch what I'm going to do to you. What? This is what they do to you. I'm going to do this to you. They strike fear into you. They dress up. I was watching this video. Don't go watch it. This video, some people practicing, doing their stuff. And people running away from these little images, running towards them. And guess what? One of the images fall over. And it was a man underneath it, naked, running around, pushing it. <laughs> you see that? But people are afraid. People see this thing running towards them and people are ah! Because they strike fear into you. So the angel even said to Daniel, don't be afraid. And remember, God does not give us a spirit of fear. God is all powerful. Not Satan, nor his diviners. We see in the book of Acts, even diviners have to bow. Give up their magic hearts and books when the Holy Spirit is in town. Because the Holy Spirit is not in some churches. No oil in there. Because it's only diviners and magicians are in there. Acts 19 verse 19. Listen to this. This is after the apostles preach. Verse 19 says, Also many of those who had practiced magic bought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them and they totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. In today's money, you're talking almost $7 million. They burned those books. If they were so powerful, it was not talking about the people who go to them. It was talking about the people who practice these things. They are the ones that repented. So can diviners and magicians be safe? Can those who practice them be safe? Yes, they can. They can. Burn your books and come to God. Burn your books and come to God. Stop shaking your bones and come to God. Stop shaking your arrows and come to God. Stop looking at the liver and come to God. Stop passing your children through the fire and come to God. Stop, 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 stop consulting the dead and come to God. Come to God. Come to God through Jesus Christ. Come to God today and be saved. It says in Acts 17 verse 30, Truly these signs of ignorance God overlooked, but now command man, all men everywhere to repent. So people of God, today is the day we are forbidden from all the way back in the Old Testament until now. We are forbidden to practice this divination. Don't tell me about it's a family, family trade. Don't tell me about that. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19. It says you shall keep my statues. You shall keep my statues. God is saying that. I'm just taking a little piece of that. You shall keep my statues. And then verse 26 it says, You shall not eat anything with blood, nor shall you practice divination or suit, saying, Stop the obia working, stop the voodoo, stop the witchcraft, stop the Santa Maria, stop shaking bones, stop going to the whole man, stop going to the wise man, stop going to the mother woman, stop going to your papa, stop going to your false prophet, stop it, stop it. Because in God there is no divination, it's only holiness. In Jesus' name, amen.